Dr. Alan Christensen talks about Hashimoto's disease. Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Alan Christensen. I'm the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Thyroid Disease and very passionate thyroid advocate. And I'm here today to talk to you all about the distinctions between hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's disease and also whether or not desiccated thyroid can be used with Hashimoto's disease. So we hear about hypothyroidism. It's a huge condition. This impacts at least 30 million people. Many would argue twice that number. We hear a bit about Hashimoto's, but many really aren't very clear on that. Hashimoto's is really the most common cause by far of hypothyroidism, and many that have it don't know they have it. What happens is that the gland itself is very, very sensitive and in need of iodine, so it's got very powerful mechanisms that pull iodine inside of it, and it actually concentrates it as much as 100-fold over your blood levels. You know, so far, so good, but the problem is that there's a whole lot of waste in the environment nowadays, things like mercury and lead and perchlorate and fluoride. And these wastes really weren't around when this mechanism evolved millennia ago. So a lot of those things can get trapped inside the thyroid along with the iodine. And some people's concentrator, based upon their genetic variation, is less specific than others. So that's why this clusters in families. So basically, with genetic susceptibility, and some wastes pulled in the thyroid, you get a whole bunch of junk that starts an inflammatory reaction. And somewhere along the way, your immune system starts to attack this, and it starts to attack the proteins inside your thyroid. And over time, your thyroid gets chipped away at, and there's simply too little physical mass, too much, too little meat of it left to provide hormone to supply your body's needs. And that leads to a state of hypothyroidism. And there are other ways that hypothyroidism can play out, but in the modern world, in, in the industrialized world with iodized salt, this is the most common single way that it happens. So when there's too little thyroid hormone, there's steps that can be taken to make up for that. And ideally, one can actually act at the earliest stages, take care of the causes, and be stabilized. But a whole lot of folks, unfortunately, this gets discovered when they really can't reverse it completely. And they need to rely upon thyroid hormone from outside of their bodies to complement the lack that they have to get enough to function right. And there's different types that are out. The most common types that are used still are only one type of hormone called T4. And we expect the T4 to convert and make the more potent active hormones, the T3 and the T2, but unfortunately this doesn't happen for all people. This step works well probably about 60% of the time. This step works well probably about 10% of the time. So apart from just T4 medicines, which are primarily Synthroid, Levothyroxine, a few more generics, there is also desiccated thyroid, which is ground up pig thyroid. And that contains all the hormones in roughly the same proportions the body would make, which is really cool. Now you hear data out there saying that if you have Hashimoto's, if you have active antibodies attacking your thyroid, then you can't take desiccated thyroid. You know, when I wrote my book, I just tried so, so, so hard to find some medical basis for that assumption, and I still have yet to find one. There's not much data looking at it. The little bit of data that has been done has actually shown the exact opposite. There was a study that came out in the late 80s looking at just this topic. They had people who were known to have Hashimoto's disease, and they were taking oral desiccated thyroid, and they watched the impact that it had upon their immune process. And they showed that it actually would reduce the body's immune response. They called it oral desensitization. So if you're orally consuming some of the thyroid proteins from a desiccated thyroid product, if anything, that will reduce your body's immune attack against your thyroid, it does not worsen it. And the other thing I always think when someone says, those with Hashimoto's wouldn't take desiccated thyroid or shouldn't, I always think, well, who else would? Because that's the vast majority of folks that are hypothyroid. So of course they can, they can do very well on that. And the majority do notice a big improvement in their symptoms. So yeah, don't let the fact that you have Hashimoto's make you think you shouldn't take desiccated thyroid. If anything, probably the opposite. So thanks so much for your attention. And again, this is Dr. Alan Christensen. Ask your doctor about the Nature Throid Difference, a T4, T3 hormone replacement medication that stimulates your body's natural processes without synthetic hormones. To find out more, go to www.nature-throid.com.